Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are building really small space vehicles once again. So this is my really, really tiny space plane. It's not the smallest number of parts. I could probably get rid of the fuel lines and the avionics package, but this thing is orbit capable. Despite being maybe not the best thing at taking off, I actually had more trouble getting the landing gear set up so that I could take off the runway. And uh, that was actually one rare good lift off that I got on on tape, so to speak. So yeah, it's just got a, a standard turbojet. It's got a couple of the ram air intakes on the side. It's very important to use the ram air intakes because they are by far the best. They're better than the radials. They're better than the other than the um, nacelles, and they're better than the straight up basic intakes. Seriously, just stick with ram air intakes and your life will be a whole lot better. So yeah, we're going to head this up to altitude, level off around 20 kilometers. Uh, it'll take a while to get up there and we're going to fly horizontally, trying to pick up as much speed as possible. More importantly, we want to burn off fuel because the more fuel we burn off, the less we have to take into orbit. Now, as you start getting up high, of course, you're start going to start suffering flame outs. But because this is a single engined plane, at least the flame out won't spin you out of control and into the ground. So just back off the thrust and keep on tweaking it until you start finding that you can't really get your speed much higher. At that point, fire up those little thrusters. Now these are the mini radial engines. Between the, They each generate 20 kilonewtons of force. So that's 40 kilonewtons there plus whatever I'm getting from the engine. The problem is they don't have independent throttle so I can't throttle back the jet engine while throttling up those little radial engines but you know, regardless you should be able to, if you've burnt off enough fuel, you should have enough energy to get yourself into orbit and then make a circularization burn and that will be us there rather nice 75 kilometer orbit is a pretty low orbit but this is a very minimal aircraft again I could probably you know adjust this and get higher the radial engines are actually they're pretty powerful for their size. They have a great power to mass ratio, but their specific impulse is only like 300, so they're not the most efficient. Very, uh, you know, it's a, it's a trade-off, let's say. The, they can actually be very good as extra thrust, say, to add to a nuclear engine or something. You can have them and then turn them on and off. Turn them only on when you need them. But yeah, uh, there's me just doing my deorbit burn. I do have enough liquid fuel left, but I decided to try and land this thing just using, just gliding it in. And, eh, well, I ended up on some hilly terrain and it didn't work quite as well as I expected. But, you know, you know what they say. The best kind of landing, or the, a good landing is the one you can walk away from. Look, there's a couple of bits still attached to the spacecraft, and hey, the landing gear still works. But yeah, a um, bit more practicing and uh, better lining up, and this is, this is one that went a little better. The wonders of quick save. I, I just had to put this in here because it worked. <laughs> it was so good. Now this one actually came in a little early, and then I had to fire up the engine and fly over the mountains prior to the the uh, Kerbal Space Center. That's what I was going to say. Kerbal Space Center and give me a perfect chance to line up to the runway. Now, uh, it actually glides pretty well. You notice that it doesn't really have any of the proper wings. It has the fins on it, the tail fins with the tiny built-in flaps. That's really good if you want to go for minimalist part counts because it includes a control surface that also acts as a lift. It's not quite as um, as extreme as the canards are. The canards can really flip your stuff out of control. But actually, the aircraft as it's designed is pretty stable because I put the center of mass quite a way forwards. Very important to watch your center of mass versus center of lift. And here we are coming down. I think I'm actually coming in a little high. So I'm going to drop my nose down and just try to make sure I come in and have plenty of runway. 
But as it turns out, I don't need very much runway because I pretty much get it right on the end of the runway. That's a pretty good landing in the end. No engine power needed for that final approach. So that thing glides pretty well, even though it has stubby little wings. It does a great job, I think. You can lose the avionics if that's not your thing. That's the only way I can figure out how to get it to attach to the standard cockpit. And uh, unfortunately, that's the thing that needs it most. Anyway, uh, if you remember my the previous version, I created a seven-part interplanetary rocket. Well, one of the new parts is a double-length fuel tank, a double-length Rockomax, which means that I can take that seven-part rocket and turn it into a six-part rocket. And just taking it into orbit is just the same as before, uh, which means you have to run a very, very steep ascent otherwise the tiny thrust on this engine on this nuclear engine is not sufficient to get you into a circular orbit before you fall back into the atmosphere indeed i actually did start to fall back into the atmosphere before i finally reached orbit but ultimately got there wasn't a problem and a bit of a circularization burn again put me in a circular orbit with plenty of fuel. This spacecraft should have more than enough fuel to head out to either the moons of Duna or uh, the moon of Eve. And that of course is left as an exercise to the reader right now because we've all seen that in previous videos. So yeah, I was trying to figure out the new minimal number of part rockets. So in version point one seven, the aerospike was a lot more powerful, and then they nerfed it. Unfortunately, that meant that my three-part rocket is no longer capable of getting to all the way to Minmus and back. So uh, I had to go looking for other things. Now, it turns out you can, in fact, build a nice four-part rocket. In fact, there are several ways you can build four-part rockets, which will get you into orbit. This is the largest one. This is the one that actually had the most delta V once it got into orbit. It uses uh, yeah, the two double length Rockamax fuel tanks and a mainsail. And it has plenty of thrust. But of course it does suck down fuel something terrible. It's quite easy to... to you see that it's generating some ridiculous amount of thrust. Almost 8 Gs of thrust. But yeah, gets me into orbit. I can fly around and admire the sights, but to come back there is no parachute. I have to soft land this thing. Uh, very important that I have enough, um, I have enough rocket fuel to actually deorbit the thing. So I try to deorbit over land, but I, I kind of mess it up in the end. See, so there's me putting my periaps over over land, hoping that that's what I shall encounter, but. Well, what happens is I come in and I end up over water. So much for so much for the best laid plans of mice and men. Now, you might be thinking that a splashdown on water is a safer option. And uh, in reality, water will cushion the impact somewhat. Unfortunately, this is Kerbal Space Program and water is far less kind than solid earth when you're landing. So here's me attempting to bring this down carefully onto its tail. You see that I have a few hundred units of fuel sitting there and at this low thrust level this will actually run me for, for almost a minute. I can get more than a minute's worth of uh, descent thrust at this speed. So it's actually rather casual. Just want to bring it down onto the surface at a sufficiently low velocity that I do not destroy my rocket. So they're down below 100 meters, just bringing up my vertical velocity just a little. So I'm down to 150 fuel units, the clock is on this, and I touch down very elegantly into the surface and fall over and destroy the rest of the rocket. That's what water does to you. So yeah, not the most successful mission, but proof of concept, yes, you can in fact fly a four-part four rocket into orbit. You can also build smaller versions using the regular size of the smaller tanks, the full-length tanks, and uh, you can either use either of the LV engines and they will get you into orbit in no time. 
I tried to do this, I tried to do a two-part or three-part rocket using the aero spike, but I discovered that something odd is going on with the aerodynamics again. <laughs> And uh, this thing, you will fight it, you will fight it, you will fight it, and eventually you will just lose it. And yeah, you, I, I was unable to get this high enough up to really exploit it. I don't know if it has enough delta V to get into orbit. This one also suffers the same issue but it is twice as long so yeah you can there's three versions of this rocket that are orbit capable you can take that aero spike and replace it with the the two um, either of the two lv engines and that will get you into orbit now the lv engines of course have thrust vectoring or one of the engines has thrust vectoring so it doesn't seem to have the spin issues that i got here but the aero spike is more efficient and the trade-off is that, sure, it goes out of whack and points off in the wrong direction, but it's so efficient and I've got plenty of extra fuel that I can, in fact, continue all the way to orbit, even after a crazy spin like that. We just continue to thrust towards orbit, and, yep, that's us getting there we end up in orbit we end up in orbit with 10 fuel units left it is not much but we are so close that it is enough to at least deorbit. it is probably not enough to land but i didn't bother testing that so instead i went and i tried to build a three-part probe <laughs> that could at least leave the atmosphere and so yes I stacked a couple of solid rocket boosters. Now there's no staging on this. The trick with the solid rocket boosters is you can cause them to explode by firing the engine at the right time. And the trick is to wait until the last moment, but not so late. If you leave it too late, it won't explode and you will be stuck with a non-functioning engine. Of course, you can do this with a regular liquid-fueled engine or even a Nerva sitting on top of this. Uh, that increases your part count to four, and you might think you get a lot more endurance from it, but the problem with the probe is that the probe runs out of power before you run out of fuel then you end up basically out of control until your fuel burns out and you don't get nearly as far as you might like. And of course adding a solar panel increases the part count. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. Hope you found this interesting. Fly safe.